Representative Delicia, do you want to make a comment? Oh, I have comments on a few things. So at the appropriate <laughs> time, you, you let me know. I wish the survey had included it, whether or not folks were aware of the safety improvement plan that PennDOT has had in the works for Henry Avenue. As different folks uh, contact my office from time to time with similar concerns, and we update them on all of the activity that has occurred since 2012, um, they are pleasantly surprised for the first, most, most part to learn that there have been 13 meetings and 31 communications from my office. We took the time this afternoon to detail all of this. All of this is on my website. Um, and that, in fact, the construction, there was so much input from the East Falls community that PennDOT split the project in two. So Port Royal to the Wissahickon Creek Bridge is the first part of it. And the second part of it is from that bridge down to Abbotsford Avenue in order to allow for all of the input from the East Falls community. And that, in fact, delayed construction for the East Falls community for that safety improvement plans, many of which that are, were identified earlier are incorporated into that project. Some of the suggestions, and I've been in communication with the East Falls Traffic Committee as recently as a, a month ago. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we got a letter from the East Falls, and we have been working with the Traffic Committee all along. So, you know, the East Falls Traffic Committee uh, weighed in uh, in January with an evaluation of a plan that was kind of wrapped up in 2017 with the very last meeting being in East Falls. So I think, and David can, you know, help me with this too, because this is a coordinated effort between the Philadelphia City Streets Department and PennDOT for Henry Avenue, which is in fact a state designated route. This is not like when I recently did my kit, redid my kitchen, that I could say to my general contractor, oh, gee, I decided to put in a slightly different cabinet here, or can we move this there? And it's between the general contractor and myself. We agree on a price. We agree whether or not it's going to hold up the project. Life goes on. These projects have to meet federal standards, state standards. It has to pass muster with the city plans. These are incredibly involved projects. So at some point, it, the discussion has to end unless there's an egregious oversight. And, and David, please say, wait, Pam, you're painting yourself into a corner if I am. Uh, David Duclos, you, you know who you are. And yep. uh, that, that then, then design and all of the stuff that goes with design has to happen. And those plans need approvals by many, many, many different agencies. The fact that there's a lot of bureaucracy to it is just a fact. We can discuss that all night long as to whether there should be that much bureaucracy. The fact is, there is. So to at, at the 11th hour, I would even say half after the 11th hour, for folks to want that process halted so other considerations could be put into place is like, you're, you're, you're further delaying this months and months and months, plus it's affiliated cost. I mean, what was incorporated into the East Falls portion cost additional funding over and above what PennDOT had budgeted for this. And PennDOT went out and found that funding to make those good suggestions become a reality. We're not even letting this get underway to determine how this will impact you know, the concerns that I hear here and I have heard for years. It got underway in the upper portion on March 29th that if you travel that portion of it, you see some things that are happening and taking place. So even with, and I too, um, Emily made a note about why law enforcement itself wasn't part of this because I have a very extensive file, no lie, on this project. And that included an extensive meeting between state police and local law enforcement so we could all understand as citizens 
what what they could do about this. What is, you know, what was in the realm of reality and what was legal to do. So for instance, many people may not realize local law enforcement in Pennsylvania, not just Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, are prohibited from using any type of radar. Prohibited. We're the only state left in the country that prohibits radar. This would be a very helpful tool to help with speeding. And speeding is happening everywhere, every part of the district. We hear about it, we see it, see it. The irresponsible driving is through the roof. And in fact, I believe I've heard that the pandemic, which took a lot of people off the streets, actually opened the streets up that created more accelerated people going well beyond the speed limit and therefore creating these situations where these accidents have happened and created property damage, uh, personal injury, and in some instances, and one would be too many fatalities. So um, this has got to be a multi-pronged approach. Uh, as Sarah mentioned about two, three years ago now, I think it was in 2018 in June, I was able, with the support of the East Falls Community Council, and, and John Gillespie or Bill Epstein, if he was on the call, can correct me if I'm wrong, because I wouldn't have proceeded down this path without the support of the community. I represent the community. Uh, to put speed cameras on Henry Avenue, it was at the same time that the pilot project was going through for Roosevelt Boulevard. And we got that um, amended into a piece of legislation in the House, it went into the Senate, and somewhere along the line in the Senate, we got jacked. I don't know how else to put it, because nobody has been able to give me a explanation, but we got jacked, I got jacked, and um, that amendment language came out. Otherwise, today, speed cameras, not to be confused with red light cameras, would be on Henry Avenue. And in fact, um, the the parking authority just issued its first report because speed cameras have now been on Roosevelt Boulevard about a year, I think, give or take. Um, and even though the state approves the legislation, the local government then needs to approve it. And, you know, there's a lot of, like with any of this, a lot of moving pieces, no pun intended. So again, um, there is a radar bill moving out of the house this is very, or I've never seen a radar bill even pass out a committee in the House. I've seen a Senate bill regarding radar, but a House bill moved. I amended the speed camera legislation into that, and I have mentioned this at quite a few town halls, in press releases, at Pacific Association meetings. So, you know, if this is a surprise, it, it really shouldn't be. The information is out there. And that bill is currently, it was anticipated to run out of the House a few weeks ago. It's gotten uh, caught up in a discussion about racial profiling. I've never seen that aspect of the debate come up pertaining to this bill, but people are actively trying to work, work that out. I was in touch with the um, state rep who heads up our Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus and somebody else on the Republican side and those details are being worked out. If the bill goes out of the House, it still has to go to the, the Senate and get to the governor's desk. There's also a Senate radar bill moving. Um, but that is thought to be another tool to try to do that. Ray, I'm not sure about what may need to be done in order to make those installations happen. I myself am sensitive to our tree canopy, more than you know, long before I ever came into the legislature, but choices need to be made every single day, and we have to constantly weigh the, the benefits and the costs of proceeding down one path or the other. So, you know, if a few trees are have to get, uh, you know, cut back as a result of this, you know, I would be surprised if the community doesn't find that to be a trade-off that is, is worth happening. And I cringe every time a tree is taken down or, or is not planted. So that, um, and I know the traffic committee has some additional concerns. There were some things in the improvement plan that they blessed and thought were great. There were other things that they made suggestions and PennDOT's answer was, 
we can't do it at this time. And they did not um, expand on that beyond that, but it didn't say no, it said we can't do it at this time. And then there were some, a few things that the traffic committee objected to. Um, but if we don't get any of this underway, and if there were to be that amount of pressure to totally bring the rest of this project to a halt, we will never know. And nothing, I mean, then that, that, just, that just delays this unbelievably. And I can't tell you how often my office, we stay on top of this. Where do we stand with the contracts? You know, when are they about to be awarded? What is the time frame to begin construction? What is the total time frame till completion? Um, we thought we would be a lot more delayed as a result of the pandemic. I was almost pleasantly surprised that um, we weren't any, any further delayed as a result of that. They know that this is an important project. Very grateful for all of the community meetings because the folks who gave input for the folks who traverse this road and these, uh, uh, you know, other roads uh, daily. So we are more nuanced on these twists and turns uh, almost than PennDOT can ever be. But then PennDOT and the city have to reconcile that with standards and a budget. And these are these are the realities that we face. And I, I wouldn't have, you know, I would appreciate maybe David, have I missed any salient points about the process? Because I don't think anybody from PennDOT is on at the meeting tonight. Um, but David, I think you're involved, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're also involved in the back and forth. Have I missed anything that um, would help folks understand here that best efforts have been made all along? No, I mean, I, I think you covered the one thing I would add though, and Sarah can, um, can maybe would remember it. I, one time I did a presentation about um, to the Vision Zero conference about traffic calming measures that work and, and, and on a different slide, traffic calming measures that don't work. And, you know, there's, there's things that, that can be done like those flashing lights we put up there by Coulter, you know, by the, you know, the, the Kelly house and on, up by Schoolhouse Lane and signage and all sorts of things. And there's things that do work, you know, like some of the things that, that we're going to be trying. And it's just the problem is that for the, some of the things that were added in is like I said, you know, they were, all they were going to do is they were going to modernize the traffic signals and, and make, make, make the intersection safer. So, you know, the, you know, when it went back to the drawing board is to try to make the, the, the entirety safer, not just the intersection safer. And um, what needed to happen then besides money and design and community input, which there was, you know, a substantial amount, thank you, uh, Representative Delisio for that, um, is that the things that were added in um, needed a lot of process to get done. So like, for example, like changing curb lines, adding a planted median in part of it, uh, you know, and, you know, and, and things of, of that nature, things which would really would help. Remember one of the first things when I came into this area and, you know, it's not strictly speaking East Falls, but I saw a name on, on this call who would appreciate it, uh, for Walnut Lane in uh, Bluebell Hill, you know, how do we calm that? Because that's also been an, an issue for traffic. And, you know, when you have a wide open road, you know, you tend to get speeding. So by doing some of these things to narrow the road, you know, to have, you know, to what Ray said, you know, having trees, you know, not too close, but not too far away from the road, things to narrow the roadway, you know, does make traffic, generally speaking, go slower. All that being said is that, you know, just to keep in mind for everybody's sake is that even the best laid plans uh, will only work to the extent that it, it will work. You know, nothing, none of these things are going to be a silver bullet. And so all of these things are going to be you know, a proportionate improvement over the existing, you know, for example, when you have a, you know, that dirt bike or a person going, you know, on Kelly drive, you know, like, or, or the, per, or the nurse that passed out on the 3900 block of, of Henry, you know, there's certain things that, you know, are just going to happen, but certainly the, the things that were added into the East Falls section of this Henry Avenue project were things that were, purposefully chosen that were proven to be able to slow traffic down. I'll leave it there. We've, and, and we've I, think, a, well, I just wanted to say, Emily, I want to make sure folks understand. I more than understand frustration 
patients, you name it. Um, but it's, it's not that this topic has been, and I find particularly if newer people have moved into the community, they're not even aware of the safety improvement plan and are actually very happy to hear that something is in the works. That gives them some comfort. And I don't know, it, it would have to be somebody more technical like David to comment on, you know, folks are patient, but if a block agrees to have something done in a year, I, I, that is just not how the process works. So I think maybe it would be very helpful, it, and that's what we talk about our town hall all the time, the legislative process, because if people don't get the process, don't understand the process, whatever you're advocating for, good luck because then it's all politics and I say elbows to make anything happen. So understanding the process is, is a good way to understand that we may want to respond more quickly and see an outcome, but that may not be how, how um, the, that if the process can move that quickly, you can't do some, like on Henry Avenue, you couldn't do something for just one block. You have to design for a section, I would I would well imagine. Um, and I know that both Ridge and Midvale are also state roads, but the state works then in conjunction with the city. Um, I, I, you know, my suggestion, and I've made this at a Vision Zero meeting, a, my suggestion is put a governor out there. You know, all these cars today are like our computers. Put a governor on the on the on the car that says you can't go more than five miles over a speed limit or six miles, and the other governor, if you will, is on the speed limit sign. And you know, I almost want to say this goes away. It, it's I saw an example of that down at Old Dominion, electric scooters. And as soon as you cross onto the campus boundaries, the scooter slows down to the appointed speed limit, and that's a governor on it. And this te John Taylor, the former uh, transportation committee chair, tells me this technology exists. And to me, this would be the quickest way to stop speeding. Or if you're, you know, you've had so many infractions along the line of speeding, um, you have to get a governor for your car or something. I don't know. But we, we don't have the budget to redesign every road and to do all these things. Um, it's, it is a challenge.